Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will be talking about the five books that I found really useful during my university years as an architecture student. And these books would be particularly helpful to those who have just started uni. So I have categorized the books into three categories. They have architecture theory, they have architecture technology and skills that could help you as an architecture student. Book number one is called How to Thrive at Architecture School, a student guide. And this book is the skills book that I was talking about because it gives you advice on both your education and also your architectural journey later on when you're pursuing a career. And this book also outlines the essential qualification and the work experience needed to become a qualified architect in the UK, which is really important information to people who are new to the architectural industry. The book is written in a way that it covers a range of topics. At the beginning, it covers a lot of soft skills that you will need when you go into architectural school. So for example, time management, other soft skills, and they also teach you basic ways of approaching design and also doing architectural research. The book then talks about architectural technology and talks about the professional practice. It talks about part three for a bit and how it focuses on the legal side of architecture. The author also emphasizes on importance of communication and collaboration and how you need to establish these skills when you're in architecture school because the construction industry is not a standalone profession and you need to collaborate with other professionals like quantity surveyors, different types of consultants, engineers, in order for the project to work. Moving on to the theoretical books. So the first one is The Architecture of Happiness. The book explores the relationship between architecture and happiness, and it also argues that the quality of an environment has a great impact on our well-being. It also states that architecture has a great potential to impact our lives in profound ways. The book begins with a discussion of symmetry and importance of proportion to bring about aesthetically pleasing structures and also to make them emotionally satisfying. It then moves on to discuss colors, light, tone, to bring about comfort and inviting the people mentally and physically into a space. It then dives into the psychological parts of architecture, discussing the grandeur of Gothic buildings or like the simplicity of modernist buildings. Our built environment can reflect and shape our lives and the architects have a social responsibility to bring about structures that encourage harmony. This book is an interesting read because the author draws upon insights from other fields like anthropology, literature, psychology to create a more holistic view and dissection and also exploration between the relationship of architecture and happiness. The second book is called The Eyes of the Skin and this book explores the relationship between the human body, our perception, and architecture. Architecture nowadays are really dominated by our perception of sight or vision and as designers we should aim to design, build buildings or spaces that engage all the senses so the experience can be more holistic. In the first part, the author examines the role of the human body in architecture, and he challenges that architecture should not just be a visual experience, and we should incorporate all five senses when designing. Second part of the book, the author argues that the sensory experience is really important, and that designers should focus more on the emotional and psychological part of the architecture, so the visitors or users can connect more. The final part, the author explores the relationship between architecture and the human spirit, and he believes that architecture has a purpose and has the potential to elevate humans and inspire our souls, and we should always aim to create something that is inspiring and connecting to the users on a spiritual level. Now, diving into the technological parts of these resources, first one is Architect's Pocketbook, and I think this one is really useful that you'll be using for for the rest of your life because it contains all the essential dimensions you will need throughout your career. Ranging from the dimensions of typical tables to dimensions of typical rooms to typical wheelchair accessible corridors, this book has it. It also has tips for management and design and construction and this will be especially handy when you're in your first year and you're not really familiar with the regulations and dimensions but later on you'll be needing it for the management skills as well. Last but not least, on the list we have the Environmental Design Handbook. We all know that architects or architecture students or design professionals in the industry have a social responsibility to create sustainable buildings so as to minimize the detrimental impact it has on the planet. This book covers a range of topics ranging from site analysis, 
to sustainable design, to energy efficiency, to renewable energy resources, water conservation, and material selection. It has examples and comparisons of wall layers, roof layers, ground layers of greener alternatives to the less green alternatives that are being used today. And as an architecture student, it is important that we start learning about these techniques and the technologies that we can incorporate into our designs to make it more sustainable for the future. And there we go, five books that I find really inspiring and really useful. So there are absolutely more books that I find useful and inspiring, but these five are the most elementary ones and I think would be the most useful for people who are new into architecture school. And I'll be starting an email newsletter to kind of update you on my thoughts. It's nothing formal, it's more about fun, it's more about like a pen pal style thing. So if you're interested, the sign up link is in the description box below. And with that, it's great to talk to you and don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.